Steady, man. Steady. Left oblique. Charge! My army prepares itself to attack a Union fortified position at the Battle of Mansfield. Hey there, Ultimate General Civil War players and history buffs. This video is intended to highlight some strategies for taking a fortified position in the game and to briefly discuss some of the historical accuracy of the combat. I outnumber my enemy in this battle, especially early on, and so I chose to draw my forces up into two lines and to move quickly on the objective. Fortified positions are very difficult to take, and almost impossible if you're outnumbered, and so it's important to limit casualties and maintain the size of your army throughout your campaign. Even if you are successful assaulting an enemy position while outnumbered, chances are that you will take a lot of casualties in the process, which will weaken your army for future battles. I have found that it works well to attack a position with two lines. Have the first line charge and fight hand to hand, and then the game allows the second line to shoot into the melee and hit the enemy without hitting your own men. Of course, that wouldn't work in real life, but the game allows it. If your enemy has a better position than you, charge and fight hand to hand. It's not a good idea to trade volleys if your enemy is entrenched and your own men are standing in open fields. My men reach the enemy and the battle commences. I find that this is the best strategy if you find yourself needing to attack a fortified enemy position. Move quickly, take the objective, and then set up a defensive line and hold for the rest of the battle so that you avoid unnecessary casualties. For the most part, I really like the feel of the game and the fighting feels historical. The strength of the different types of units feels balanced based on what it would have been like at the time. For example, some Civil War games make artillery overpowered. In Ultimate General Civil War, artillery is useful, but certainly not the arm of decision. Likewise, cavalry cannot stand up against infantry, at least mounted, which is also historical. Infantry combat is the focus of the game. Fatigue is also handled reasonably. Your men move slowly, tire easily, and major assaults take time. This isn't Blitzkrieg. The biggest aspect of combat that I think is not historical is the staying power of units. It is very difficult to rout the enemy army. Conversely, it's also difficult for the enemy to rout your army. The Civil War is full of battles where one side surprised their enemy with a powerful assault or flank attack, which caused the entire enemy line to panic and run away, ending the battle. For example, the Union Army at Chancellorsville responded to being flanked by Jackson by quitting the battlefield. In this game, it's easy to make an enemy unit route, but the unit will just run away a short distance, reform, and will be ready to continue fighting. In campaign mode, therefore, it doesn't pay to completely destroy your enemy, since the enemy will fight to the bitter end, and you will take heavy casualties, which will jeopardize your success in future battles. I think the best strategy for winning offensive battles is to attack quickly, capture your objectives, and then find good ground and create a defensive line. Once you have your objectives, your goal should be to run out the clock while minimizing your own casualties. In this battle, you'll see that after I took the objectives, I dropped my forces in a defensive position on good ground to hold off the assaults of the enemy. Soon, the enemy is battered and stops attacking my lines. I could have very easily finished the enemy off, but it would not have been worth the casualties I would have taken to do it. In the end, I win the battle while losing about 4,000 men. And after the battle, the Confederacy rewards me for winning the battle with about 8,000 men, which puts my army into an even stronger position to fight the next battle. If you watch on, by the end of this fight, I have the enemy surrounded on all sides, but I just hold my army in its position. Had I closed the noose and completely finished the enemy off, I probably could have done that 2 to 1 or even 3 to 1 casualties. But then my army would be weaker for the next battle, and the Union gets ridiculous numbers of reinforcements, so they would probably be okay for the next battle. I'm going to end my commentary here and let the battle continue to play. If you found any of this discussion interesting or useful, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss my upcoming guide on winning the game as the Confederacy. Thanks for watching.